Gracious God, give us the wisdom of your Spirit to understand and receive the depth and breadth of the love that Christ showers upon us. Bless this reading of your word that we might be transformed by its grace. Amen. Please be seated. We will now hand the time to Pastor Ming to deliver the word of God to us. Friends, welcome to Monday Thursday. And now looking across the century this evening. Tonight may seem to be the least well-known night to the Easter trilogy. Monday Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter. And I'll ask most people about their Holy Week traditions. And it will usually be just Easter morning, probably Good Friday as well for some. But Monday Thursday always seemed to be the third child of Easter week. It gets very little time and energy from the general congregation. Monday Thursday comes from the, from the Latin word for mandate or commandment. Why? Because on Monday Thursday, you are reminded of the new commandment that Jesus gave. And I always wonder, why tonight hasn't gained more popularity in the Christian church? Maybe it's because Jesus on Monday, Thursday, gives a new commandment. And we don't really like being commanded to do much of anything. Or perhaps we just don't know if we are up to the task, the new commandment that Jesus gives us, to love one another as Jesus has loved us. You know, we often forget that before Jesus dies on the cross for us in love on Good Friday, and before Jesus breaks out of that tomb of death and despair on Easter Sunday, he actually asks something of each one of us, that we love one another, that we humble ourselves in the act, to act in loving service to one another. Even Judas, yes, that we love and welcome even the Judas, the betrayers in our midst. And with that, let us read again this very, very familiar passage of that very first Monday Thursday recorded for us in John chapter 13, verses 1 to 17. And with open hearts, let us hear what God is saying to each of our hearts. Before the Passover celebration, Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave this world and return to his Father. He had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end. It was time for supper, and the devil had already prompted Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything, and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel he had around him. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protested, you will never ever wash my feet. Jesus replied, unless I wash you, you won't belong to me. Simon Peter exclaimed, then wash my hands and my head as well. Lord, not just my feet. And Jesus replied, a person who has bathed all over does not need to wash except for the feet to be entirely clean. And you disciples are clean, but not all of you. For Jesus knew who would betray him. That is what he meant when he said, not all of you are clean. After washing their feet, he put his robe on again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I am doing? I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, 
And you are right, because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth. Slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. This is the word of the Lord. You know, the plot is now beginning to thicken. The smell of betrayer is in the air. The shadow of death is hanging over Jesus. Yet, he takes a few moments to deal with, of all things, dirt. Jesus had a totally different take on dirt and the scene that we are going to look at this evening, maybe outside of the crucifixion, the single most amazing picture of the Son of God in any of the four Gospels. He did something that no other self-respecting Jew or Gentile would do unless that person happens to be on the lowest rug of the social ladder, a slave, on the modern terms, a servant. Yet, this is what Jesus did. He washed someone else's feet. Not one, not two, but all 12 of his disciples' feet. He washed every single smelly mud cake feet in that room and in this place. Jesus volunteered for a dirty job because the 12 were unwilling to serve each other. Washing a person's feet was common practice in the first century. But the 12 avoided it like a plague. But not so with our master. When Jesus washed the feet of the 12, he was demonstrating for us how to love each other. When Jesus washed their feet, his actions showed them the extent to which he loved them. Now, then we ask, how can we Love our family and friends to the fullest extent as he did. Now this evening, we will examine what Jesus did with and to his disciples. It's all about how you love and who you love. You know, we express our love in a variety of ways. Some people show them, with, show their love with words. You know, every phone call ends with repeating the loves, I love you. And I do that with my grandnephew. Well, I knew I do that. Some show their love with their behavior. They cook their favorite food. Others love by their gestures. They send flowers. You know, there's a unique verse in John 13, in verse 15. It says, I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. Now, do you know that this is the only time Jesus told anyone that he had set an example. Now think of all the things that he had said and done. He handled temptation, but he didn't say, follow my example. He prayed a model prayer, but he didn't say, here's an example of how a person prays. He raised Lazarus from the dead, but he didn't say, go and do likewise. Now, don't you wish that he did? But when he washed his disciples' feet, he stopped long enough to offer an editorial comment. He said, I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. You know, this story offers at least two implications. First, tells us, learn to lower yourself. And that's humility he's talking about. You know, the Jews traveled by foot and they wore sandals. Path roads did not exist then. As a result, sandals became dusty, feet became dirty, and there happens to be wet weather. Their feet may be caked with mud. And after a long journey of any length, your feet would need attention. Now, in Jewish culture, it was the duty of the host to arrange for guests to have their feet washed. And if you were wealthy, a slave or a servant washed your feet. In the average home, the wife or the children would wash your feet. 
It was a menial task that nobody wanted. You know, the context for John 13 is a borrowed room at the beginning of the Passover feast. Thirteen men arrived at their man cave. There was no host, no servants. And John tells us that it's time for supper. In other words, 13 guys arrived and started eating without washing. The horrors of the parents. And what did Jesus do? Jesus sat back, he watched, and he waited. The basin was there, the water was there, the floor cloth, the feet cloth was there. And it remained there. And when he had finally had enough of waiting, we were told he got up from the table, took off his robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, and poured water into the basin. And then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that he had around him, one foot at a time, one smelly, mud cake feet at a time. This began the humiliation of Jesus Christ. Humbling himself as a servant, he washed the feet of the disciples. And later, he went even more, humbling himself as a criminal. He went to the cross for his people. Throughout, Jesus didn't say a word, but his actions spoke volumes. And when you love someone with your whole heart to the fullest extent, you will do the most menial jobs without complaining. Ask any mother or father. Now, if you have traveled to America, you would have seen or eaten at Wendy's Hamburger. You know, sadly, they closed all their outlets in Singapore in 2015. Wendy's Hamburger's founder, Dave Thomas, he used to tell his employees to get an MBA. Now, that's not Masters in Business Administration. But what it meant was mop, bucket, attitude. And that's what he did too, working alongside everyone else, taking orders, serving food, mopping the floor and flipping burgers. Mop, bucket, attitude. Learn to lower yourself in humility. Second, learn to raise others up. You know, when Jesus washed their feet, he was announcing to the 12, to his disciples, you are important to me. Jesus could do things they could never do, and yet he raised each of their disciples' worth. So we don't have to push our way to the front. We don't have to sweet talk our way to the top of the ladder. Put ourselves aside. Instead, help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand to another. And that's exactly what Jesus did. He loved others to the fullest extent. Now, so how do you love? He taught us here by lowering ourselves and raising others up. But make sure you know who you're supposed to love. So who? Well, everyone. Everyone without prejudice or condition. You know, so far we've been talking about theory, but serving others demands practicality, isn't it? So let's see who are the people that Jesus loved. First, he washed Peter's feet. And Peter represents a friend who disappoints you. Before this night is over, Peter denied his relationship with the Messiah, not once, not twice, but three times. Jesus, however, still washed his feet. Have you ever have 
a friend disappoint you. Work hard then to resist the temptation to be vindictive to them. Love them like Jesus did. How Jesus loved the twelve. Wash their smelly feet, lower yourself, raise them up and wash your grudge right out of their skin. Finish with Peter's feet. Another feet came, Judas. And Judas represents the enemy who attacks you, who betrays you. Think of the irony. Jesus washed the feet of Judas so that he can swiftly run and betray him. That doesn't make sense, does it? And to make matters worse, Judas profits by his, by his betrayer. Now, Jesus knew from day one that Judas would betray him. But still, he chose him as a disciple. For over three years, he sat by Jesus. He went with Jesus. He sat with him in the upper room, dipped his chips in the same bowl of salsa, Yet, he turned on him in the blink of an eye. Judas' feet, he washed. Peter's feet, he washed. And he went on. Next pair of feet, Thomas. And Thomas represents the friend or the co-worker who doubts you. Ever had someone question or doubt your abilities? Or question your intentions? Or worry whether or not you have their back? Jesus understands because he had Thomas on his team. Now, if you think that you work with a tough crowd, what would you do if you were the head of a coach or a manager and Peter, Judas, and Thomas were the best three team players? You know, if it's me, I would rather, you know, I either lower my expectations or resign. Or maybe resign and lower my expectations. But Jesus did not. Jesus set for us an example. One pair of feet, after another pair of feet, yet another pair of feet, he continued. Give me another foot and another foot. Jesus showed us by his actions how to love the unlovables. And thus fulfilling God's commandment to love one another as God has loved us. You know, before his death, Jesus is trying to shape a community, community that be bearers of God's love for the world as he is. So now, at this point, I want us all to just look at your feet. We will take a moment to look at your own feet. Look down, look at it. I know some of you have worn shoes, some sandals. But take a look at your feet. Friends, yours, your feet have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. Like the disciples, you have each come into this gathering this evening from the world with dust on your feet. I would like to invite you now to come before him and allow him to wash the dust off your feet the mud that has been caked on your feet. You can close your eyes as you come into his presence. What have you been carrying? What burdens are you carrying? What wrongdoings have you done What have you carried 
from the world? What are these dust on your feet? You take a moment now to present them to God and allow Him to wash each and every of the dust particles from them. As you have laid it at his feet, the Lord hath washed them clean. And now I want you to look at the feet of the person to your right and the person to your left. Do they have nice feet? Are they manicured? Friends, the feet that you see, your neighbor's feet, they represent the feet that God has asked you to follow in example, to love and to serve. They may just be the feet you are called to wash and to love. These may be people who have offended you, people who have betrayed you, people who have hurt you with their words, people who have backstabbed you at the workplace. They could also be the rough sleepers who have been sleeping rough near your block or on your stairwell. Or they may be the cleaners that cleans your community. Whose feet is God bringing to your mind at this point of time? As he had told his disciples on the first Monday Thursday, he is telling us today, I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. So will you follow his example to love and to serve one another? No matter how smelly, how dirty those pale feet may be to you, when he presents you with another foot, would you wash it? Would you love it just as Jesus has washed your feet and loved you? Maybe for some of us tonight, you will say, Lord, give me another feet, another foot to love. May we always be reminded of the commandment that he gave on the first Monday, Thursday. To love one another as Jesus has loved us. Amen.